nor be given in marriage, for they can no longer die, they are like angels. I'm not mad, I don't do the dot, 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 and I don't have a sermon title. <laughs> So, do you all know why Matt is never sick on Sunday mornings? God won't let him. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Even when he is deathly ill, he will still come in and preach. Because once when we were first married 12 years ago, I told him that if he was ever sick on Sunday <laughs> and I had to preach, my sermon would be, Jesus loves you. No one else does, but Jesus loves you. <laughs> and that was it. I would sit down, and that was it. That would be my entire sermon. Uh, he's been very afraid for 12 years. Still am. <laughs> but on the other side of the coin, if you ever want to hear God laugh, just tell him your plans. He's let me get out of doing much of anything up the front of the church for 12 years. And now he's up there laughing at me. So you all sit and listen to God laugh at me while I talk about heaven and marriage. Feel free to laugh along with him. Today's gospel was about a riddle that asks if seven brothers all marry the same woman and no one has any children with her, who is her real husband? Or more specifically, who gets to be her husband in heaven? The answer is, it doesn't matter. There is, no child, there is no marriage in heaven. Marriage is for our time here on earth, and not after we're dead, and certainly not after we've been resurrected. So, I do have to wonder some things about this text. They just said all seven brothers married her, and no one mentioned anything about the length or the happiness of this, these marriages. Was she thankful that she had a husband or seven different husbands to provide for her? These were the days when uh, women were not allowed to work outside of the home. They had no one to support them if they didn't have a husband or family to provide for them. The Bible doesn't mention anything more about this very unlucky woman because, let's face it, if you've... Uh, outlives seven husbands, you're either very unlucky or have a bad, very bad temper. <laughs> it doesn't mention anything too detailed about her life, because it was in, in essence a riddle made up by the Sadducees to stump Jesus. But Jesus is not someone who is easily stumped. It turns out he turns the question around and uses it as a teachable moment. Jesus was the master of the teachable moment. He said, the people of marriage, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in the age to come and in the resurrection of the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage. And they can no longer die, for they are like the angels. They are God's children, since they are children of the resurrection. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. What Jesus is basically saying is that be thankful and enjoy your marriages and enjoy the days that we've got on earth. Even when we die, we aren't going to need marriage. But then here comes a part of the gospel that we didn't read. There's a little tiny line after that that says, some of the, teacher, some of the teachers responded, well said, and then no one dared to ask him any more questions. This is after they've been chewed out for the last three, uh, three or four uh, parables. The whole group had just been taught some very tough lessons, and no one wanted to be in the hot seat anymore. They were just thankful that Jesus didn't single him out anymore. So, November is the month where we traditionally give thanks for all of the blessings in our lives. Last week, we had... Um, we gave thanks for all of our friends and families who have gone on ahead of us. We gave thanks and remembered them in a lighting, candle lighting ceremony. We also gave thanks for the everyday things in our lives. We do that at the end of the month. There are the easy ones, our spouses, our kids, our families. And then there are the ones that are harder to find, our memories, 
our laughter with friends, our health. Most of these things we take for granted day after day. So we choose to see only the bad things about what we've got. The noise from my boys that are making that they're making when they're supposed to be quiet. But we forget to be thankful that they're capable of making that noise. The fight with our spouse about whose turn it was to clean the kitchen. But we forget to be thankful because we have a kitchen to clean and food in that kitchen to make it messy. But every so often we're reminded that those are gifts, and those gifts can be taken away from us in the blink of an eye. So we take a deep breath, wipe the tears from our eyes, and say thank you to God that we are entrusted with the treasures that he so freely gave to us. My boys, my argumentative husband, and even my messy kitchen. This year is the 26th year of the women of the ELCA. We give thanks to them also. We thank them for the fellowship of turning the church from a place of worship into a place of welcome. It is the women of the church who are usually the first to offer comfort to those who need it. To organize the food that we all joke that Lutheran meetings can't happen without. It's the women that are stepping up to fill in the gaps and that's a tradition dating back to the 1800s when Christian women formed might or sent societies to fund those missions. When others in the church said that there wasn't enough money to do projects or missions, the women would collect those offerings at home and give them with thanks and praise, dedicating those funds to mission. Because they believed every cent counted and that those lives can be changed with just a little extra help. So join in with the women of the ELCA as we give thanks for all of the gifts that we've given and received, especially for the love of Jesus. Amen.